The New York Times, but first up, she is a Grammy winner and a two-time Emmy-winning comedian and an actress who holds the Guinness record for most comedy specials by a woman. More importantly, she is a good American who loves her country and should be able to work in it. Kathy Griffin. <laughs> Do. I, I did. I cut my hair very, very short. Yes. We're all shaving our heads now, the pissed off women. We're yeah. angry. We're shaving our heads just for fun, to scare you guys. Bill, first of all, I really want to thank you for being one of the first and only people to publicly support me and say what happened was bullshit. It was bullshit. Yeah. Publicly. Well. Yes, because uh, I, I got texts from some from celebrities that were like, um, "Don't tell anybody I sent you this text, but <laughs> I support you all the way. I love you, <laughs> Jerry Seinfeld." No, I'm oh, kidding. No, oh, I'm kidding. God. I'm kidding. <laughs> as if, by the way, as if we have each other's numbers, me and Jerry Seinfeld. But go right, ahead. Exactly. I happen to know they don't. Um, <laughs> well, we've missed you. You know, I mean, if, if the, it's true. Oh my goodness. I mean, and, and you know, one thing nobody could ever take away from you, you are a hard worker. I love it, man. You, I love it. You got where you are through hard work. You joke by joke. One you... dick joke at a time, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I never had a writer. I never had a studio. I never had a manager. Just out grinding it out. And right. that's what I love doing. So for you to have it all taken away, Overnight. Really, it just really pissed me off more than anything. Because, I mean, look, you took a picture. You took a very bad selfie. <laughs> I blame the photographer. I've been on these photo shoots, and they're always trying to do something provocative. Right. So they said, hey, why don't you post... The wacky picture. The wacky picture, and it turned out to be a little too wacky. It was quite wacky. Okay, it was very wacky. And, uh, but, you know, if this wasn't the United States of Babies, you know, you would... The first thing you said was, look, I went too far, <laughs> I get it. It should have been over. Okay, right. there, she gets it, fine. But, of course, everybody has to go batshit nuts about everything all oh, yeah. the time. Yeah. And... Actually, the selfie analogy is really good, because almost like, imagine if you took the... You had the worst selfie in the world, you went to bed and you woke up, and you found out that the president tweeted about it, which then mobilized <laughs> the alt-right, Fox right. News, everybody else, and then... You well, know, they and also, also thought it was illegal, which right, distasteful, I mean, but not illegal, covered by the First Amendment. No, I went through. So, uh, I, I, while we still have one, while we still have one. I mean, I went through something like this. Yours is worse because you were actually interrogated. You were detained. Two months federal investigation by two um, departments from the DOJ, the Department of Justice. Right. I mean, after 9-11, I, I, had, I had this on my wall for mm -hmm. a while, the Variety headline that says, yeah. you know, White House keeps heat on ABC's I mark. remember very well. Yeah, okay. So, and it was bad. Ari Fleischer was talking about me in the press conference every day, but you had it far worse because mm -hmm. you literally had your livelihood taken away from you. Yeah. My show kept going. Uh, we, our ratings never dropped. I, was I, I even had my, um, I was on, in the middle of a 50-city tour, and I had, like, 25 dates up until the following fe February, because this happened on May 30th. TMZ was reporting my show cancellations in real time, which scared, I think, the theaters. So right. these theaters, which I don't blame, because all of a sudden, you know, normally they do, like, right. Stomp or Mamma Mia, and all of a sudden they're getting robocalls from, like, right. a bot farm in Macedonia going, if I see that bitch on stage, I'm going to cut her in the cunt, chop her head off, and put her head up her cunt. That was, no joke, that was the number one reason that the um, folks who are angry want to kill me. That's the number one procedure they want to do. Moving on. Um, <laughs> yeah, it was, it was ugly. And, and yeah. I mean, but it, it really got out of hand, I think, when, mm -hmm. when the official security apparatus of the United States of America, which you'd think would have something better to do, and mm -hmm. I am sure knew better, that then you were somehow a threat to the president, well, the, interrogated you. You, yeah. you. I mean, flying is still a problem for you, is yeah, it not? I, I, I mean, you were on the D-list, now you're on the no-fly list. <laughs> <laughs> the D-list is much better. D-list uh, yeah, is much better. Yeah, way better. Um, yeah, I'm on the Interpol list, and so when I couldn't get work here after the that... Interpol? Yeah. For international criminals? Yeah. So yeah. I did um, an overseas tour. I did 15 countries in 23 cities, wow. and I was detained at every single airport. Which is frightening because they see, they scan your passport, they see, you know, and th by the way, this is really scary when you're at the Singapore airport and you see the person go like this. 
And then there's like whispering and then they put me in like a detention room and you don't know how long it's going to take. And I'm thinking, you know, I got to, excuse me, I have an eight o'clock show. I got to make soccer moms and gay guys laugh. You know, right. let's, let's go. But, but in, all serious, in all seriousness, there were times when they took my devices. They can do that. And you might think, you know, we all have our rights, but when you're in that moment, you're really at the mercy of one or two people in that room. So it happened, it happened at LAX, it happened at London Heathrow, um, and it's scary every time, because you don't quite know what it is. So if you had to do it all over again, I mean, assume you wouldn't take the picture, mm -hmm. but... <laughs> I'd do Mike Pence. No, I'm kidding, no. I'm kidding! <laughs> <laughs> to do that joke, 10 yeah, months. Okay. Um, <laughs> but would you do anything over uh, the way you, it was, the aftermath of it? Oh yeah, I mean, everything about the aftermath was, you know, it, it truly is a historic situation. So one of the things I like doing about touring is, as you know, you're on stage and you can really tell your story without censorship and stuff. So the current show I'm doing actually does have like a couple serious moments in it because when I described the interrogation, you could hear a pin drop. I mean, like I said, I've just done 23 cities in 15 countries. And the intensity of those moments when my First Amendment attorney said to me, you know, if this doesn't go well, you'll, you'll leave here in handcuffs. And the DOJ called my attorneys every single day for two months. Did you come in yet? Did you come in yet? They, every day they called and said, we can do a, um, it's called a no-knock, which is what they did to Paul Manafort. Sure. Yeah. No-knock, come in. Wow. You know, and I'd be like, fine, come on in. We can take my Backstreet Boys CDs. You know, so it was crazy, but that's how crazy it was. So I was determined to not do like a perp walk. So it cost me a lot of money, of course, but at least we were able to negotiate the interrogation happening in my attorney's office. But you know, just being told you, you could leave in cuffs. Yeah. That, you know, that's... and it came straight from the DOJ and the White House. So, uh... and that's the, that's the administration that we have now. So that's what I am here to talk about, is I really believe that it happened to me and I really believe it could happen to you and other people or people's kids or relatives. It could happen, it's gotten crazy. Well, I, I mean, we're not gonna <laughs> hopefully take that picture, but I do believe wh uh, what you're saying in general is correct. Everything that was unthinkable mm -hmm. two years ago is thinkable now, dictatorship, fascism, mm -hmm. all those kind of things. Uh, so I, I, I don't think any are going nuclear war, the, nothing yeah. is off the table. Correct. Okay, so do you think, so, I know some friendships were casualties in this. I'm down to three gay guys. <laughs> <laughs> and you, and you. So, <laughs> but I hear you're fluid, I hear you're fluid, which is very trendy, very trendy, Bill, very hot, sells tickets. Uh, I'm just gonna play straight man today. I, I, so, uh, oh, and but, I, got, but, I got canned from CNN which sucked because I was never a yeah. CNN employee. I only worked right. there one night a week, but they made like this sweeping statement and well, I was gonna you know, say, do you Don think... Jr. was like, of all people like Don Jr., that freaking Cro-Mag, like right. barely human, whatever his deal is. Right. He goes on like Good Morning America <laughs> and says, we don't just want to ruin Kathy Griffin's career, we want to decimate her. And that was like months after the photo. So, so but do you, do you think- I'm not decimated. Right, no you're not, you look very strong. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I mean, we need comedians. I mean, I know that sounds like a pat on the back because I'm one of them, but, uh, but we really do, especially yeah. in this era and in any era to, to sometimes go over the line yes. so we know where the lines are of and course. also to establish that we do live in a country with free speech. That was as distasteful as it might have been to a lot of people. It was free speech. Yes. And free speech is still kind of important. And It's I'd like important. To and also it. the alt-right has kind of co-opted it. Like, right. you know... A speech at Berkeley and somebody knocks over a garbage can, sets it on fire, and if it's an alt-right person, they'll say that's free speech. But they kind of co-opted that. But, you know, you and I do the kind of comedy that pushes boundaries. And then to do that, you have to move them and then cross them and push them again and see what works. And I'm finding, like, I know you're on the road as well, I'm finding that people are wanting that kind of comedy. Oh, We're in such an intense time. So thirsty, People don't yes. want dog and cat jokes. No, you know? they, so, I mean, they definitely... They want I do, the real deal. And they want to be very mean to Donald Trump. And I can do that, I can do that. You could do that too. So. I'm, I, I'm, de I'm definitely trying. I do have, by the way, I have a small victorious announcement. Small. Okay. Okay. All right. So I'm dipping my toes into touring again, even though the Trumps and nobody wants me to work again. But I'm dipping my toes in, and um, I just booked today. I'm going to do a show at Carnegie Hall in New York. And I've heard of it. And I'm also. 
I'm also going to go right to Trump's backyard and do a show at the Kennedy Center. All right, Kathy Griffin, triumphant.